what's up so in today's video i'm going to give you an update on my harvest farming strategy um this round i've decided to just include in delirium as well okay there is no other option don't find excuses to say oh you don't want to buy a compass so and so forth but if you really do not like delirium then just allocate something else okay um it's not hard and this round we are also incorporating wandering path so I thought it was not a good idea. I tried it last week, but because I tried it with the new keystone, that's why maybe I left this out. Um, and I didn't play much last week, so it wasn't really a good experiment, I would say. And after testing out multiple times this week, I have concluded that Wandering Puff is kind of superior right now with the changes. Uh, last week as well. Okay, actually, last week Wandering Puff should be pretty good. As compared to the usual farming, alright? So, um, without further ado, I'm just going to head straight to the Google Spreadsheet first. So, everything here is updated. Okay, everything here is updated. Um, it is literally the next line or the next section right after L and Go. So, you can uh, see that. I'm not going to go through the introduction, but just something new over here. Red line. If you do not, do on, if you do not want Delirium, guys, just allocate something else. Another leak mechanic, okay? You can do Essence, Harbi, whichever um, is fine. It's, it will slow you down, but yeah, you don't want to do that. Even. Okay, so what has been changed? We are using Wandering Path now. I'll further explain this later. Let me just read through first. Um, basically, Wandering Path has allowed us to use Rusted Scarabs to hit 50% pack size much easier. Why is this so? I'm just going to bring out a skill tree to show you. Um, here is because of top head. So previously, if it's top head, every node is two percent increase AFL modifier. Now that we are using wandering path, it's basically four percent. So we are getting sixty percent increase AFL modifier on your non-unit maps. That includes pack size as well. Okay, if I were to bring up the calculator and just briefly show you, let's say our map has twenty percent pack size. Okay. Now we have 60% increase if our modifier, 1.6, correct? Plus 60%. This is 32 pack size. Okay. Each rusted scarab, because of growing hordes, is gonna give you 5%, which means four scarabs is 20%. Easily hit 52%. Right? So that's why the wandering path is better. That's number one. Okay. Um and then number two, you will basically encounter harvest much more. Let me scroll down here. Harvest, blah, blah, blah. Oh, oh, okay. If you are not, okay, this is provided. If you are not using the secret growth compass, okay, as of now, the compass is still at a reasonable price, I would say. But if you are not using the compass, the secret growth compass, it is here. 60% chance to contain the secret growth, okay? Previously, it was 45% if you are doing the normal harvest. So, that's one thing good. Um, Another one will be, actually, I realized that you will encounter more rare monsters inside the secret growth, okay? It's probably because of this note here, like, uh, yeah, you, you give up this uh, boss, but then, you're going to encounter so much more rare monsters. I encounter lots of plots with two or three rare monsters, all right? Hardly I actually seen one with either one or zero. Most of the time, it's either two to three. Yes, there will be one on off, so uh, like here and there, definitely, but I definitely can see the difference, all right? There will be like two to three, two to three rare monsters in a plot more often, Okay. And yeah, on average, I counted like you will get at least 2,200 life force every harvest. On average, okay, estimated. You might get 2,000. You, sometimes you might even get 3,000 and above. It's really good. Okay, Um, and I removed Tormented Spirit because they just can't possess you in Delirium. I have no idea why. I think it's a bug or something. Or was it written somewhere previously before? I'm not sure, but it's just not so good. So I remove it. The whole point is you want to just do the Delirium. All right, get about five to six layers of reward. Take the delirium up to your searing exarch or eater of world um uh, altars, right? For your staple currencies and stuff to sell, and then do your harvest along the way. 
okay and just get out and rip wings and repeat basically this is how the map goes it's really simple um the next thing i'll talk about is if you are choosing to pick up the uh player options of the altars right you will basically get increased corn that's why it can improve your life force drop rate you need to make sure that your character or your build is able to handle it because it is going to be very very rippy all right you're going to die a lot of times but we only have six portals there's a limit to how much we can die and if you're just not going to survive it just don't do it just take the mini reward okay the, the difference is yes there is a difference probably i would say about 30 percent more life force about 30 percent more life force but what's the point if you can't even handle it okay Main profit is still the same, added delirium orb. So this is just too good. This is just too good. What was incorporated here is you're just going to put in a compass that has a mirror of delirium. Okay, it costs 10 C each as of now. And guys, one delirium orb costs 14 C. I am very sure almost every run you're going to get one delirium orb on average. Okay, if you're lucky you get two. If you're even luckier, you can even get three. I have gotten four before. Okay, don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but I've gotten four before. Um, yeah, it's just too good. Like, as long as you drop one day, well, you're going to cover the cost of the compass. And not to mention, Simulacrum is like 60C. Every run, you're going to get like about 15 to 30 Simulacrum splinters. Right, so really good over here. Um, Probably you'll get like... 80 simulacrum per four maps on average yeah and maps oh boy now that you are going wandering path maps is like super easy sustainable like you're gonna over sustain your maps i have i have ran like i don't know maybe 12 or 16 maps and i've gotten like 28 maps back so you can see it um which i will show later on how much maps i'm gonna get back uh, the next changes will be here. I am not going to include the player option because that's just purely up to your character. But one thing to take note that I get a lot of questions from last week is that should I choose Searing and Zudge or Eater World? Now the, the answer is really very simple. What type of build you are playing? For me, because I'm playing COC, is technically a spell-based build because I'm casting Ice Nova. Um, I would be doing Searing and Zudge because Searing and Zudge adds armor to the monsters it makes it more difficult for physical attack or attack builds and then um Ictor world basically has spell suppress which is harder for spell builds right so serious and such is easier for me i'm definitely going serious and such and not to mention gem cutter prism is super expensive this league which means technically serious and such is the better choice if you can actually do it okay um shrine Okay, guys, I don't need to mention this. Okay, I don't need to mention this anymore. Map preparations. Um, really simple. Just try sell your white maps to 20%. Rare them to at least 20% back size. And just get any four rusted scallops. You can just buy them in bulk from the trade website. I have linked it below. Compass, same. I have linked it below as well. When you open up this trade link, it literally has four options. All right, just... Come on guys, don't be lazy. Just change the count to zero and just buy them. If you want to buy them in bulk, go to TFT. If you just want to test it out, just throw in one, okay? You can just enter and there you go, you'll see it. Oh, okay, so basically the <laughs> mirror of Deliver has increased in price. Okay, okay, but still not bad. Um, nonetheless, okay, this is how it goes. Um, I'm just going to show you the different variations of the map right now. Um, I don't need to go through one by one. Okay, I'm not gonna go through one by one. Is this the yeah? So this is the searing exage tree. <clears throat> it's actually very simple. Your like I mentioned, your main focus here is to go through the delirium mirror, kill the boss, run through the map. If you see harvest, do it. Delirium ended, pick up delirium up, get out, wings, repeat. Really simple. Okay, really simple. Now. There is actually a lot of un like extra points, I would say. So I've just put it in into here to make it one to eight points, such a way that every map drop has a uh, one out of four chance to be duplicated. Okay, and on top of that, you're gonna have like at least one shrine to help you to boost yourself in the maps. 
longer duration if you get the shrine at the start that would be super good super great and the rest is just full corn and there's something additional i took this leg that i realized is actually not bad okay i am still testing this out because there's some variation but i actually took this so maven invitation drop chance this is very interesting okay Final map boss in each map has a oops sorry. Final map boss in each map has a sixteen percent increased chance to drop a Maven's invitation. Now I know the drop chance is very low, but if you add all of this, it's almost equivalent to a hundred percent drop chance. So if the drop chance is like two percent, three percent, you're gonna get like either four to six percent. That is a lot of difference, all right. Considering the number of maps you're going to do, and not to mention that. This invitation drop chance, a lot of them are actually very expensive. Your Elder Guardians, the form, and your Elders, your, what is the other one? The, the uh, Conqueror Guardians, right? Those are really, really expensive and you really get them, it's just easily jackpot, like half a divine. That's, what, what else do you want to complain if you're getting such good stuff, right? So... Yeah, that's really about it. And um, there's another few more points which I can point out if you want to add is here. If you want to add these additional delirium splinters, it is fine. I do add them myself. Right? Um, and if you have remaining points or if you do not want like deliriums, just go for the map duplication. All right? Where is it? Oh, yeah, there, there's still some more space here. There you go. You see, you can add this and it just increases your map duplication. Otherwise, um, everything else should be just here. This is just something special because I added in uh, the notes are quite useless. So really no point adding those. Okay, um, yeah, that's about it for the for the other skill tree. If you want Eater or World, guys, don't be lazy. Just, just, just click on the other side. Okay, and then we move here. Hey, there you go, Eater or World. We are not taking the top ones before because they grant nothing. Wandering Path. Okay, don't forget Wandering Path. So there you go, this is the skill tree. Um, for those that uh, maybe in future when the Sacred Grove becomes very expensive and you want to do this strategy, um, here is the tree without Sacred Grove. Right, basically you are just removing more points, I will guess, to actually include in like the Sacred Grove chance. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then there's 6 over here. Alright, there's six over here. So six more points. Um, we are giving out some stuff like more map chance duplication. And there's no Maven over here. So if you want the Maven's invitation, right? Um, I, I will suggest you can just give up like some of this. Where else can you give up? Um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure, but you can play around with it. Like the Delirium, you can just take this and then give up the duplication. And then you can just add all of this. It, it works fine. Okay, it works fine. There you go. Something like this. But it's 1, 3, 2. Yeah, guys. Just, just play around with it. Okay, it's not hard. <laughs> so, yep. On the next part of this video, I'm going to show you like the preparations. And then I'm going to show you a few maps on how I do it. I, I will do multiple maps. Okay, so for now, I think honestly the best map is actually Atho or Mesa. Because they do drop Fortunate. And Fortunate is a very, I would say, a very common go-to divination card now for everybody. But for easy mapping, I would just suggest CD Square if you want like the easiest map to ever do. Alright, so take note of that. And yeah, after a few of my gameplays, I'm going to show you my final loop for one full cycle of it. Distributing every single run what I get in terms of Life Force and Delivery Warp. Right? Uh, and I'm just going to show you my profit and loss count right afterwards. So sit back and enjoy. Alright guys, so this is how you should always prep your map. Um, I mean, you don't have to follow exactly, but step number one, just gather all the maps that you're going to run. Um, this is just an example. Alright, I'll show multiple um, runs with different maps like City Square, Mesa and Ato. I think that's the three map that I will show. Maybe Jungle Valley as well to give you a quick view. But I don't really like Jungle Valley because of the layout. But yeah, whichever. So once you have your map that you want to run uh, or lay out nicely, first review all your maps. Okay, review all your maps to make sure that they are reviewed. 
and then throw in your orb of scouring to make sure that they are not magic or rare right this way you can chaser your maps to 20 percent and yes next will be chaser so just chaser every map to 20 percent item quantity and quality this is important okay this is important okay sometimes you get 22 percent i have no idea how i got that give me a second yeah this is, um, this is just me trying to show you how i prep my maps every cycle all right it's it's not hard it's just something that you do it once and for all and just enjoy the game right okay so last one last map okay once you have done um go take your op of binding or op of alchemy and just throw in okay throw in throw in uh just click on every single map right and next what you want to do is to go to regex why do i not have it here okay my bad so regex here um choose the modifiers that you want to do all right so for me here it is i do not want to do ellie reflect hex proof non-curse aura suppress spell damage and cooldown recovery because i'm coc and then choose this okay 20 under the pack size of at least copy the string and go back to your poe and just paste it over here it literally shows you which map is gray out which means you need to scour and do it again so click them okay um throw back your orb of binding i am low on all binding so i'm probably going to use my elk now alchemy three more maps right three more maps three more maps click one click two click three and we are done okay so this is done now next put in all or, or purchase all of your compass one mirror of delirium two life force um life force drop in harvest monsters is duplicated you can use any plant you want to be honest um blue is for you to re-roll your delirium ops to skittering but at this point i think it's not really worth because all the delirium ops are equal in price other than skittering up at, at this point of making the video um, next is your map contains sacred growth this is at 30c when i bought it but when it goes much higher um you should reconsider using this all right maybe i do not have the exact price range but maybe if it's 50 or 60c then maybe you should just use the the uh the strategy without sacred growth right and then last but not least i think this is kind of like mandatory compulsory is really good okay it's really good inside even though it doesn't affect the rare monsters but having a 25 percent increased magic pet size also means there is a chance for you to get triple magic monsters inside your harvest plot all right and the harvest the magic monsters do drop a decent amount of um life force all right they they do drop like 80 or even near 90 or 70 yeah if you have multiple of this and they drop well bonus isn't it okay and then just prep a total of 128 scarabs yep 128 scarabs is exactly what you need for like 28 maps so i've just lay out over here all my rusted scarabs and it's pretty much good to go just pick up all of this pick up all of this take up four map i'm just going to pick up one first right put it in here your scarabs dump in your compass one two three four right put in your map and make sure you click searing and such okay now for your map device um i i will suggest to just use increased quantity all right but if you really want something else you can either just choose beyond or i don't know torment as well but yeah just just eight percent increase quantity is just the go-to all right there's, there's really nothing much it basically boosts the chance of getting more loots in your altars as well and also your harvest all right guys so here i am this is the first map it is city square um please bear with me my computer is really not at its best state now it will definitely lag so yeah I'm just going to show you how I do it in City Square, alright? So, I will just go through the Delirium, go back behind because monsters will spawn, kill them, and I'm just going to spin towards the boss, right? Just spin a little bit, you don't have to kill every single one of them. You want to clear the boss first, 
and they are possessed oh my god i did not see that modifier this is gonna be so thank you for them for me i mean uh, look at this boss i am taking too much time to kill him okay which is actually not good <laughs> which is actually not good done go back and just start killing everything yup there we go when the steering exhaust pops my pc literally pop as well okay i would technically go up first all right depending on the direction you should just choose uh wherever is closest towards the the uh boss and just go the other direction right you can see the number of monsters in this map is insane when you get stuff like this like bridge just open it but you can choose not to do it what happened over here i have no idea what happened but like thank you yeah this is just thank you okay so usually i won't do the um I will not do the, 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 the what's that, the wild wood for this leak because I am still not at high budget yet and if it is very rippy for me so I will give up but if you want to do by all means okay by all means if you can handle definitely I will suggest you do uh, one thing to take note is it does not affect harvest okay the yellow um, wings does not affect harvest i have no idea why it technically it should be right because it does buff the harvest monster sometimes but you don't get additional loot so there's really no point of doing it oh my god did i just saw what i just got okay you see even though it's the delirium is ending i have six layers it's good enough it's good enough okay it's good enough don't be too greedy this is just more than enough just let the Delirium end and just continue the map. Yeah, I got a Gilded Reliquary scary up drop. There we go, one Delirium off. Okay, Simulacrum is only 12, it's fine, but... Guys, this this thing just literally covered the compass already. What, what more do you want if one orb can nearly cover the compass? Okay, I'm not complaining, so... You should not either. And this map of mine that I demonstrated is is nuts like the drop look how much I'm clicking <laughs> this is not not part of the plan while making this video but I guess this is you could say one of the lucky maps right because it's just so good like once in a while you actually get this kind of really lucky match from your searing exudge yep i'm clicking a lot <laughs> i am clicking a lot of stuff now i need to change my look filter soon man yeah there are a lot of things that i do not want to be picking up but i'm just clicking for the sake of clicking because it's on the ground Okay, so for me, when I see the Sacred Grove, I will just go in and do straight away because there's no no changes to it. I am not taking the player option, right, for more quantity. So yeah, definitely take the one that has more rare. You can see this is too rare, like what I mentioned earlier on. If you are doing, when you're doing this as the, uh, with the Wandering Path Keystone, you actually see a lot more rare than usual, than previously, okay? I think it's just because of that 60% increase in rare monsters. There we go, I looted like 60, 600, yeah, 600. Uh, actually, that's that's not a lot. Okay, just gonna take this for now. You can see our pack size is 53%, so usually, usually your, your rare monsters should be duplicated. There we go, it's duplicated. Yep, some of the monsters can be really, really very strong, so just be careful. There, there, there. Okay, at least there is one. Okay, at least there's one and this one oh we have one again okay this is not this is not really common but well you, you sometimes you get good stuff in your uh, plot sometimes it's just it's just rng ultimately isn't it okay, so 182 200 you can see the rare the magic monsters do drop a decent amount so okay so everything is just uh blue 
and I got 1,700. This is not, this is not your average life force drop per map, okay? Just so you know, usually you should get at least 2,000. Okay, I got an auto map ready. This is a good, a good one to demonstrate for the next map. And there we go. This is, this is how you do it. Okay, for the wild wood, if you have completed your map and you want to do it, by all means. Alright, the next one is auto map and just going through to show you. Look, I have 61 pack size for this map. So, it's going to be a pretty good run. Same, I'm just going to go through the all the, the Darium, but I'm going to go back because monsters will be at the start. And for Atho, I'm just going to kill everything along the way, but then you go to the right first, alright? Yes, you will pop the uh, same exact for sure, but then the boss is going to be very near. So, it's just going to be a short while. The nice thing about Atho is the roads or the path is actually very linear so it's very easy to play and the boss is relatively easy as well like there is no funny shenanigans or or, or, or difficult uh, mechanics that you need to avoid so i'll just go in pop 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 kill right boss is dead get out and we can continue back the same map Okay, you can see just by killing the boss, I am already at 5 layers of reward. That is like just good enough to even like end it, to be honest. Okay, um, and I got an additional reward as well. That's thanks to the, the uh, what is that? The, the skill tree node. Right, there's a chance that you actually grant a uh, additional layer of reward. And you actually see this quite often, right? Which also means you will have chance to get more Delirium Orbs. And guys, by the way, this is only my second map. The first map was literally the previous one which I did City Square. Okay. You can probably just see the amount of loots I have. This round, the Searing Exarch Altus is not really uh, super good. <laughs> yeah. Clearing it and okay the, the sacred grove is here i'm just going to do it okay usually i i don't wait until it's over before i do it i, I do not want to backtrack so for efficiency purpose i'm just going to do it and we have two rests here ouch something just hit me and look at how nice this is Look at the number of life force we got. Should I just should I just throw on the ground? Just one, two, three, just from two plots, okay? Apparently it did not duplicate us, so that's a little bit sad. Yeah, that's a little bit sad. Uh, I'm gonna do the next one as well. Um oh my gosh, this is not common. <laughs> this is not common, okay? I'm just gonna do the yellow ones. Yeah, this is not common. Uh, I hardly see any, honestly, I hardly see any like plots that has no rare at all, hardly. Okay, I have two here and one the other side. Yeah, this is actually more common, like having two and one on the other side is more common for me. Oh gosh, this monster is tanky. Um, right, so it did not duplicate again. That's really unfortunate. Okay, that's really unfortunate. But all is good, all is good. I'm going to get out first and continue my map. Okay, and the daddy room is ending. It's fine, it's fine, we have 6 layers already. I'm just gonna continue. Okay, got a mess out to show you right after this. And we have no delirium of. That's really sad. Okay, that's really, really sad. Okay, but I think it's fine, it's fine. Um, all of chance. 
Now the good thing over here right for Arto is actually if you are playing Arto right and you are afraid of the wild wood when you take your rounds you can actually go back and do this Viridian wild wood halfway through okay that, that's something good about this Arto because you don't have to worry about having the whole map juice with like juice monster and buff monster you just saw that monster that was empowered it was like attacking me the whole entire time like that thing was really crazy if that that monster was like all around my map i would be probably dying non-stop so yeah you don't want that to happen right and this is why you have the choice of doing this like halfway through the map in auto that's that's like something nice about auto and that's why i I kind of like prioritize Arto as my number one go-to map this league. Okay, I'm shot on this plus, and then poof, go up. The remaining monsters that you go that you clear up is gonna be buff, but they are not going to be like extremely powerful yet. They do drop decent stuff. Look. Oh my gosh, I hate seeing alterations right now because my friend is giving me traumatization. Of alterations. Yeah, there you go. It's 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 quite good. I I would say, like to do the wild wood in the middle or like near the end of the auto map, because they they buff the monsters but are not like extremely VP. All right, guys. So here's a demonstration for Mesa map. Uh, quick glance. I only have fifty five percent pack size. Right, and Mesa is gonna be a little bit harder to do the Delirium because you have to be quick. Okay, you have to be quick. The map is like diagonally towards my mouse direction. That's how the Delirium is drifting. So you have to be very quick, kill the boss, clear one round at the top, and then come down and clear the other rounds. Right, so here we go. I'll show you why it's not the greatest Delirium in Mesa, okay? same i'm gonna skip the wild wood and okay it's good that the arena is just right here can i kill it before it dies nice and i have so many jungle valley map yeah this is this is exactly this is actually a good example of exactly why your map sustain is going to be at the top of the roof because everything or near that there will be a lot of maps that just Duplicates and duplicate and duplicate and it's kind of like endless. You can sell those maps, right? Especially like maps if you are running popular maps like Arto, which you probably will be running as well. You're gonna get a lot of duplication of it and each map can easily sell for like 6C. Which is good, right? Extra currency, who doesn't want? Okay, that's why now you're done. You see the timer is actually running out already. That's why I say it's not actually the best. I have to skip that. I have to skip the harvest just because I do not have enough time. That's exactly what I meant because the layout is not really good. The mirror doesn't stop in time after you clear finish like the first cycle of it. Like the first round on top. Okay, I need to go back down. And ideally, you want to have at least 5 layers of reward, right? Ideally, that's kind of the best, I would say. At least 5. Okay, at least 5. Okay, and the mirror is ending. Is it ending? Yeah, it's ending. Okay, I'm just gonna stick to this. Let's see what we get. It should be decent, yeah, there we go, it should be decent. At least every map you should have one Delirium of, okay, at least uh, on average, yeah, you will get like none, but some maps you get two, some maps you get three, so don't complain, <laughs> don't complain. There will be good maps, there will be bad maps, as always. Okay, I'm just going to clear, finish the map. This is so unfortunate, I get zero saving exhaust outers. <laughs> if you didn't notice, yeah, I got zero of the altars. 
So I would say this is actually considered to be a not so... No, actually it's a bad map. Yeah, it's one of the bad runs. But a good variation shows, right? At least you know how it works. Oh, there was a shrine here I didn't put. Yeah. Okay, Sacred Grove. Let's see what we get now. I got two. Oh, that was lucky because this, the other crop was like zero. And I have the shrine, so it's going to clear pretty fast as well. 224. It did not duplicate again. That's so unfortunate, man. Two rare monsters. Can you please at least have one duplicated? This is not normal. Okay, I have one rare monsters being duplicated here. Okay. Not bad. And there was only there's only three crop over at this. Harvest 1-1 one, one. Always choose if there's 1-1 one, one, just look at the second line on top and see which one has the biggest number because those are magic monsters And because we have the compass magic monsters pack size increase there's chance of it duplicating as well Okay, and this rare monster duplicated so it's pretty nice look at how much life force we got It's actually pretty nice right here Okay so ending off the map, I have um, 4,500, really? Okay, that's, that's really not the best, but yeah, <laughs> let's move on to the next map. Alright guys, the last map I'm going to be showcasing will be Jungle Valley. It has 55% pack size and Jungle Valley immediately has like the altars choosing either minion or player only. Okay, um, the reason why I'm showcasing like the these three maps before that which is Ato, Mesa and Jungle Valley is because they do drop fortunate as well okay so yep let's just get things going oh I already have one extra reward on the first run so really nice over there is this the way out okay this is the way out so I need to go back first and I'm just gonna show you a quick one okay I'm just gonna go to Viridium Wood and do it for the sake of showing you guys why sometimes it can be really weepy like I, I do not know how this will go hopefully it's not so bad but it does it does buff up stuff okay it does buff up stuff and yeah it can be really weepy sometimes and I'm not the biggest fan of getting things like super weepy because uh, I just want to chill and do my map Right, like who wants their map to be extremely difficult? I bet nobody. So, okay, currency, currency. Yeah, the blue one gives currency, and the yellow. Oh, there's additional harvest right here. I should not. This is, <laughs> this is not intended. But, boom. That's one thousand. Primal. Okay, how do I do this, man? I should just take this. Okay, 1060. <laughs> this is not normal. Okay, never mind. I combined it already. Yeah. I gotta remove that later for calculation's sake. Okay, just taking all the rims. I got yellow and blue. And let's continue on with the map. I'm gonna show you whether or not it is really difficult okay it can be really difficult sometimes depending on how much empowered that is i have no idea why is that i'll look at it later just picking things up and going through it wasn't a doctor drop it wasn't anything super special so look this is a super empowered monster okay it's yeah it was like slapping me like crazy so, <laughs> and yeah, that's the reason why I don't really like Jungle Valley because I have to throw or swirl left and right, and it kind of like it's time for the um for the Delium, even though it's still okay, and it's I I would say honestly, right, Jungle Valley is one of the best <coughs> for Delium, like no doubt because of its uh, nature of its layout 
Right, so I'm just gonna pop the Legion. Yeah, because it's gonna buy me a lot of extra time to prolong the uh, Delirium, but I'm not gonna do it. I just did it. I just pop many stuff. Yeah, I think I did. That was not intended. But I guess I'm just gonna run through it. No harm. More monsters, why not? But yeah, I would not like do 100% of the uh, what is that? The Legion. And we are already at 6 rewards, so that's pretty good. And we do have a harvest as well. Yeah, that's why that's why Jungle Valley is good, like one of the best when you're doing this strat for Delirium. Because you are gonna hit like six layer very easily. Okay, very easily. I mean like really easy. And yeah, look the monsters are so buffed up. <laughs> The monsters are so buffed up. Honestly, right? Honestly, if I didn't have the headhunter, I don't think I would have survived it. And it's not even like the full flesh headhunter, it's like the replica headhunter. Not the best, but okay. Oh, I went inside. My bad. And look here, I have two of the Delirium Ops. Right, so not so bad. 23 Simulacrum Splinter, not the best, but still good. And blah blah blah, your favorite stuff. I'll just pick up the cluster. I will do harvest first. So we got two and four, definitely your two rare. I think it's a little bit hard to see on the video because the colors are not exactly accurate and I see lots of colorful whims on my harvest plot. This is exactly what I'm saying because you see it does not improve the quantity by a lot. It does not. Okay, it does not. Your 200 is pretty normal. Okay, we have a 3 here. So getting 2 or 3 is going to be quite common if you are using this strat. More than last week when you are doing the normal... Um, what is that? The normal harvest. Oh my god. Uh, look at how buff the monsters are. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, I couldn't have survived that. It was so powerful. Like so yeah, I'm just demonstrating to you guys how powerful and power monster can be in harvest and to be honest it's not a very nice sight. Okay. I do not know how many more times I need to die because of this guy, but I'm just trying my best to avoid him. Even the hinder is not going to help. And I have to be thankful, alright, because if it's a life regen rare monster. I'm definitely going to quit that map. <laughs> There's no way I can kill it. We're done? We're done? Yeah, we're done. And look, it doesn't even drop like extremely good amount of things. Like, it dropped 204 crystallized life force. That's all. That's all. So yeah, I, I it is a matter of whether how how fast you can kill the harvest monsters as well, because if you can't, you're gonna struggle like me. Like I say, I was quite honestly, I was quite fortunate that it wasn't a live regen monster. Look, this is another one of the harvest monsters that I have been problem with. I took really long to kill it. Okay, usually it'll be dead by now. Look, they drop 198, 190, and they are like both quantity buff, <laughs> quantity buff um monsters. So honestly, I I wouldn't do the Wildwood. Okay, I, I would not. It doesn't it doesn't actually buff up those uh harvest monsters. Okay, I'm just gonna do this a quick one and then our map is done. Yeah, that's that's also another reason why I hate this map because the boss is slow. Okay, but give and take. You want more? You want a better or easier delirium? You do this map. You can well technically you can ignore the boss, but 
I usually will not because the boss can drop some really good stuff especially when you are taking this top part maybe invitation drop chance right okay now that I've completed formats I'm gonna show you the loots that I got a uh, very quick one so here is like your literally your saving and such and your staple bubblegum currency and stuff like that and here is probably like the cards and your delirium orb so this is the number of delirium orb i got plus the simulacrum splinter i am going to exclude the rest and along the way when i do the rest of the map before i show you the full uh profit for this i am going to lay out in this way okay so that you can see how many splinters i've got how many uh delirium orb i've got and how many life force i've got so just a quick calculation this is the amount of life force i got so 5398 plus 1524 plus 682 we got 7600 oh yeah i got 1000 from <laughs> i got 1000 from the wildwood just now earlier so not doesn't really count 6600 that's one diff right there okay that is literally one divine okay i'm gonna do the rest of the map and i will show you the full profit afterwards hello what's up everyone i'm back and i have sorted out all my loots already this is for 28 maps and guys you will be very surprised at the profit now i will show the breakdown afterwards but i'm just going to show you a very quick i don't know you can pause the video whichever this is basically all the loots that i have gotten sorted it out nicely um, I had did not include this page because the cards are quite RNG, right? So I did not include them, uh, including the stack deck and stuff. Scarab's SL is also very RNG. Like, I, there is one map that I actually got a Gilded Radicory Scarab, but you know, you don't encounter that often in your altar, so I do not include that. I did not include that. And basically, this is like the main profit, okay? Um, all in all, this is all the life force that I have gotten, and this is like a, a, a what do you call it? A separation of every single four maps that I've done. So it's like every four maps I'll put one here, every four maps I'll put one here, so you can roughly see how much I got. Um, you can just pause this video to actually uh, view it easier. Um, and this is the amount of delirium ops I've gotten. No skittering, that's why there is a blank over here. Um, but that's fine, that's fine. Um, and simulacrum, okay. Every map I only get like 20, I would say 15 to 30 simulacrums because some of the monsters are still a bit repeat and you know, you die in between and you don't get as much simulacrum. Okay, so technically you should be getting more if you're not dying, but um, yeah, just roughly estimate about two to three simulacrums, all right? and the one that i have mentioned is this remember i mentioned in the earlier parts of the video where taking this maven invitation drop chance does seems to have a little bit of effect and true enough guys i've gotten like okay this is also very part uh much of rng because it depends on which invitation you have gotten i have gotten two of the elder slayers on my previous cycle, which I have not recorded, I have gotten one Elder Slayer, no, one the Form and one the Twisted, which is like 60 to 70 C, which is pretty good as well. Um, I have gotten the Atlas. This is also part of the invitation. So, yeah, they do drop invitation, okay? And if you get like the Form, the Twisted, the Elder Slayer, and I think there is, there is one more. I, I can't remember. There's one more that is quite costly. You are actually earning like extra profits just by killing the boss. Alright, um, what about the uh, life force? Now, I am going to compile all of them together. Okay, you can see I'm just compiling them. Here we go. I have just put there like for easier reference to show you like every map how I do. Not every single map is going to be like super good. There will be some like really nice stack of rare harvest monsters and some like just meh you don't even have you do encounter good harvest and bad harvest right but overall this is the amount that i have gotten okay so now that uh, i have shown you already i have already done up the breakdown list actually so it's right here let's just head right into it um first of all your setup cost okay setup cost is oops sorry 
your setup cost is you are going to use because we're running one cycle so 28 maps and this is like you're going to use four rusted scarab scarabs um every 28 maps right so i just listed four right here quality 28 and i'm just going to link it as like one c for each rusted scarab next is our compass this is okay let me just let me just stack up the full thing just in case some of you do not know what is it life force duplicate compass okay each is 25c at the point where i bought it um sacred growth is 30c Delhi mirror is 15c i'm just gonna put 15c because i accidentally saw that the price went up um uh, magic pack size is like just four okay and your map mod is just increased quantity you don't need to use any other thing special or whichever all right so basically every map is going to cost you 22c okay the total setup cost is 630c which is like about 3.7 divine okay and this is what i have gotten so first of all um your currency basically your bread and butter um over here this whole page yeah i understand some of them is like quite bad and not really useful so what i did is i just simply go to tft box selling too i'm gonna click my loots i click 100 percent and i am going to filter out all those that is below 10c okay you can see there's a lot that has been filtered out so basically those that is above 10c i just included in not exactly accurate but you can kind of estimate roughly around there okay you can see the highest is actually awakened sector i think i got really lucky for this one um even though it's the, the the price is like 56 is the one diff not really the best right now still a good amount of profit grand eldritch amber and because of the changes to quality of gems gem cutter prison is now so expensive okay it's really good like i'm not joking it's really good it's about 90 or 95 gem cutter prism is to one divine that is a lot that is really a lot guys so um technically saving as such with the gem cutters prison is pretty nice now okay um let's say eldritch ember is i got 104 of them if you are like end game already you should not be picking this up because it's like 0.5 c only but yeah i'll just still pick them up for casual farming uh about i'm making cartographer chaser because i still need it i am low on quantity with it i happen to get one tinted off using but if you don't include it it's fine because it's still just okay that's a big difference <laughs> yeah that's a big difference uh there will be like a lot of beyond uh monsters and map mods here and there so i happen to get one tinted off using but if you do not want it's just a 650c difference okay uh not much of a big deal one vault or uh, some vault of or fusing alterations greater eldritch blah 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 i told you i have only going i'm going to include those that is above 10c okay so that amounts us to 880 chaos estimate okay estimate and that's why i've included it here um 880c that is for currency for delirium orb total we have um 30 okay 30 there's like 30 delirium orbs here and uh one simulacrum full simulacrum is about three 300 splinters yeah so i have 100 here i just literally break it down to just 2.3 simulacrum okay one third of it and each daily op if you're gonna sell in bulk on tft it's like 14 c each 13 to 40 c i'm going to just put it at 14 because i do see people buying at 14 c simulacrum is 60 c each so each is 60 times 2.3 gonna give you 138 right next is the life force okay so life force over here i've compiled already um it is exactly what you see over here i have actually calculated beforehand and oh i have forgotten to put this 6650 equals to one div so i calculated this like backwards um this is the same as well equals to one div one div <laughs> okay so i calculated backwards in such a way that how much does one life force give you which also means when one divine is equals to 170 c one life force is going to give you like 0 0.0256 okay just really counting it to the bare minimum so that it's more accurate right it's very simple let's just say if uh let's talk about the blue life force all right if one diff is equals 170 c 
right? So it's very simple if you want to count one life force, it's just 170 divided by 6650, right? So that's why you have that amount. I just run it off to the uh, third decimal place and there you go, 0 0.0256E, which is going to amount us to this, okay? It's pretty much accurate. Um, and you can see the blue life force is the most. Um, yellow is 6,000 is to 1 diff, so not much of a difference right there. And uh, red, I had about 10,000, not the best. It just totals up to like 1,790. Okay, um, next is the Elder Slayers. I just included uh, both of them in as well. It's 100 C each. If you want to lower down the scale, like because like I say it's RNG, you can get the Twister, you can get the Form. The other one as well is just good money. Um, for me, I just included it in because I got it. And yeah, it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy, okay? When <laughs> you add up all the profits, it actually boils down to like 16 divine. Yeah, 16 divine. You, you heard me right. It's 16 divine. Okay? Uh, it's 16 divine per cycle. I have no idea how it amounted to so much, but... You can see from the difference, right? Like, the main bread and butter is really, like, from the currency itself, okay? I mean, you can try to exclude the currencies, those that you are not selling, which is probably um, your... Okay, you're going to sell this, but oh, maybe... Yeah, you're still going to sell this as well, or fusing, you might keep them. Alterations, you might keep them. Chrome, you might keep them. Instilling up, just keep them. Hope I regret you will keep them. This you will sell. Exalted all you will sell. Yeah, even though the rest, you see the rest that you are going to sell is it's still going to give you 4 div, which is like 750. So it's still going to give you about 15 div profit. Okay, Delirium. Our cost of Delirium is literally 105C only. So 558C revenue, you minus of 100 is. is it's like 440c profit just by doing the map normally and getting all your daily realm ops how good is that okay and life force i don't think i need to explain life force this is just yeah it's just it's just good okay life force is literally if, if you want to count in like this three together it's 413 c uh okay maybe let's just count in the the scare ourselves shall we this is like 500 c i don't know cost and we are getting like 1,200 profit. Yeah, that's that's a lot, people. <laughs> that's really a lot. And that's how I amounted to like 16 div profit. And considering I every map, I I take about 6 minutes, right? Uh, without doing the wild world, of course. Do not do the wild world because it's just going to buff out your harvest and you're going to take forever to do it. It's about 5.8 divide per hour. Just... Pretty good. Yeah, honestly, that's pretty good. Okay. And um, the next thing I want to mention is because I am doing it on City Square, I would actually highly recommend you to do it on Auto Map. Like Auto Map. Oh, yes. And this is the amount of maps I got back. Okay. It's like overkill. Okay. I am supposed to have four more maps, but because I did the showcase on the video and I kind of like favorite and do the next map immediately so i technically i should have four more auto maps okay and that's why i say there is no excuse that you do not have maps you are going to over sustain at some point and the over sustain is actually going to give you more profit as well because you can sell that in bulk right so no excuse guys you are definitely going to fully sustain your map of course make sure you have all your favorite map slots um void zones everything all included okay but yeah what I want to say is, I think auto map is the better choice right here. Imagine if I will be doing auto map and I get a few fortunate cards, okay? It's good. The profit is going to be much higher. Definitely. So, it's, yeah, it's just good. It's really just good shit, man. Okay. Um, yep, everything has been updated on the Google spreadsheet. If you find any problems, do let me know. Alright, that's it for the strategy update. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Um, happy farming, happy harvest, and happy delirium of farming, whichever. 
I think more or less the price is going to increase over time. So yeah, quickly get your compass before the price jack up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.